Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another update on the forecast for this multi-day stretch of significant severe weather that really got kicked off across parts of Texas yesterday and is now shifting east into East Texas and then eventually into the southeast for Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, there have been some changes to the outlooks since our video yesterday morning, so I wanted to come back and do an update on that. And as we said yesterday, what if you're looking at a specific day of interest within this stretch, what happens the previous day into the morning of the day of interest is extremely critical for for giving us some clues about what is going to happen on that day of interest. So for example, uh, we have some morning convection ongoing today. That is going to really play a role in what happens with uh, this afternoon and evening severe threat across parts of Texas. So we're going to go into that now that we are on the morning of our uh, the second kind of major day of this severe weather stretch. Uh, so we're going to go into the meteorology there for today and then the rest of the setup. Uh, but the SPC has shifted the outlook lines a little bit. This is what today's outlook looks like. We have a large enhanced risk level, three out of five there, centered across parts of central Texas into uh, east Texas and western Louisiana. So places like Waco, Austin, Houston, Lufkin, Alexandria, Louisiana, up to Shreveport, and everywhere in between under the gun for that greatest level three out of five severe threat today. Large slight and marginal risks surrounding that. All hazards on the table for today, including the threat for tornadoes, a couple of which could be strong, especially along the uh, zone here in the yellow stippled region there, place from basically places like Lufkin over toward Alexandria, south of Shreveport, toward the Texas-Louisiana border, in that greatest threat for a few tornadoes, a couple of which could be strong in that area. Large 2 and 5% areas surrounding that, so a broad area of tornado risk for today. Damaging wind also going to be a threat, perhaps significant damaging wind down here across parts of southeast Texas into western Louisiana. And then the threat for large hail is there as well, perhaps large to very large hail uh, in that, spe specifically in that red stippled area there, that 30% hashed area. Could see some giant, large to giant hailstones today from this activity. Then we go into tomorrow, Wednesday, April 10th, and the SBC has bumped up severe probabilities for tomorrow to a level 4 out of 5 moderate risk in the red region here, the red shaded region here from basically Alexandria, Louisiana, eastward into parts of southeast Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and far southwest Alabama, including places like Jackson, Hattiesburg, in uh, areas in between uh, Natchez down there under the gun for that moderate risk for tomorrow. Large enhanced risk surrounds that as well, uh, including places like New Orleans, Mobile, uh, and areas in between. Uh, so a very high-end threat for tomorrow is expected. Uh, they, the significant tornado threat is going to be there for tomorrow as well. The moderate risk area does include that 15% hashed area for significant tornadoes. Uh, so we could see some strong tornadoes tomorrow, especially in the 15% hatched area, the red hatched area there. But we do have a 10% hatch that extends all the way uh, down into southern Louisiana and eastward into the southwest Alabama, western Florida panhandle region. So tornadoes definitely on the table for tomorrow. Significant damaging wind is also on the table for tomorrow. We'll have very strong kinematics with this system. So very intense Wind gusts are possible as the storms move east. Could see some 70, 80 plus mile an hour gusts there, especially in that pink hatched area, the 45% hatched area. So a very high threat for significant damaging winds and tornadoes with the Wednesday setup. Large hail going to be a threat, but not going to be the major threat for the Wednesday event. Then we move into Thursday, the final day of this little outbreak sequence. Two different areas of severe threat. Slight risk extending down from North Carolina southward into the Florida Panhandle along the southeast coast. Uh, as the threat from Wednesday continues into Thursday. And we also have a second area up in Ohio, Kentucky, western West Virginia uh, for a threat for a few supercells up there that could produce an all-hazards threat uh, uh, closer to the surface low. So a bimodal threat on Thursday, but the greatest risk for the next several days is going to be today and then especially tomorrow as the storms shift into the southeast. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into some data. This is what we're going. Uh, this is what's happening right now. We've got a very complex convective scenario that is expected to unfold today. Really, from starting this morning, it's already started this morning. Going into the afternoon, we'll have multiple rounds of severe storms to deal with, and that is what is lending some uh, uncertainty into the forecast. So this is what's going on right now. We have a batch of storms up here across the Texas Panhandle into northwest Texas that formed earlier this morning, closer to the dry line out west. This will continue to pose a large hail threat. These storms are elevated north of the best 
ingredients which are farther south this morning and will probably stay that way through much of the day will uh, have the chance of producing some large hail as they move into the Red River region of, of southern Oklahoma, north Texas over the next several hours. We also have a batch of storms here that is north and along and north of an outflow boundary from last night's convection. We've just had continual convective development in this region, and we have an outflow, outflow boundary kind of draped across this region as well. Storms are forming along and north of it. You can see they're quickly moving off to the northeast, so it is likely that these storms will become, will stay mostly elevated, not quite enough juice for storms to work with uh, at this point yet, especially north of that boundary. But if any storms in this cluster can form along or south of the boundary, which is gonna be more likely here, kind of on the southwestern flank of this activity, and you see a lot of activity is developing in that region, we could see the severe threat ramp up through this morning as the storms shift into East Texas and Northwest Louisiana. And they have, the SPC has issued a mesoscale discussion for this activity. You can see here in the red outline, uh, they are looking at the possibility of those storms increasing in coverage and intensity this morning if storms can uh, latch on to that uh, outflow boundary there. And we'll go into the surface data here in just a second to show you where that is, but just wanted to give you an update on the threats for this morning. I'm recording this just about 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time, so this threat will ramp up through the rest of the morning. Again, I think most of this activity will remain elevated, especially up here toward uh, northeast Texas, northern Louisiana, but if anything can latch on to the boundary or remain south of the boundary, that could have an all-hazards threat with this morning activity. And then additional convection is expected later on as we go into the afternoon, and that could pose that greatest threat for uh, some large hail, damaging winds, and a few tornadoes, a couple of which could be strong. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our upper air maps here, the 500 millibar map on the SPC mesoanalysis page. Here's that cutoff low that we've been talking about the past couple of days. It's kind of just kind of just meandered across the desert southwest yesterday, but it's finally starting to make its trek east into the far southern U.S., and that is going to be our main impetus for severe storms today, uh, at least on the synoptic scale as we have strong southwesterly flow out ahead of it, and that exit region will be right over our uh, threat area for Texas for today. So we'll have plenty of forcing for severe storms uh, in this regime. As we have seen this trough start to dig down a little bit even more from yesterday and continue off to the east, we have seen the surface pattern uh, respond accordingly. Very broad surface low at this point, not really a tight, well-defined, uh, tightly wound surface low here. It's kind of a broad surface low, but still we have a little bit of that uh, focus for severe storms at the surface. Uh, but it, as I talked about yesterday, it is a little bit on the unfocused side. Usually with these severe weather setups, you'll want to see a, a nice, tight, uh, well, tightly wound surface low here to really focus those storms along surface boundaries, etc. But we've seen a lot of different areas of convection this morning, and that is because we have just a little bit of a nebulous low-level pattern here. Lots of warm advection out ahead of this developing broad surface low, uh, and therefore we're just, we've just had multiple rounds of severe storms continuing through the overnight hours into the morning, and not really a huge focus for severe storms. Uh, and that could lead, that again, is lending some uncertainty into this setup. But overall, surface low located here across uh, uh, central Mexico into southwest Texas with some nice broad southeasterly flow in a decently broad warm sector out ahead of that surface low. 850 millibar winds, something that we lacked yesterday for most of the day. The tornado threat did not really materialize with yesterday's setup across parts of Texas, mostly just a large hail threat. Storms out west formed north of the best moisture and remained elevated for quite some time as they trekked off to the east. Did eventually make it into some better moisture, but the tornado activity did not really materialize. Instead, we had some large hail reports from those storms as they moved east yesterday. And then just a really clustery mode uh, precluded a greater uh, severe weather risk along that and south of that warm front yesterday, which is what we kind of talked about in our morning video. Um, and some of the same issues are, are present today, but one thing that we do have is a low-level jet. Low-level shear was very, very weak through much of the day across the entire risk area. That is not going to be the case today. Back to the west along the dry line back here, where the western extent of our moisture, very limited low-level shear. But out to the east, we have this nice plume of low-level winds here, 850 millibar flow at about 35, 40, 45 knots, and that is expected to maintain itself across east Texas into Louisiana for much of the day. So this secondary round of storms here, both along this outflow boundary here and any storms that fire to the south going into the afternoon across the warm sector will be in this nice low-level jet plume and therefore will have low-level shear to work with for that strong tornado, tornado threat if uh, discrete supercells can materialize. So that is a big difference from yesterday, and that's why the SPC has outlined that strong tornado risk out for that East Texas to Louisiana corridor with today's setup. 
Let's look at some surface data here. I'll refresh this real quick. So this is what we're dealing with right now, complex surface pattern. Here you can see the just broad cyclonic flow around this surface low centered across central Mexico into west and southwest Texas. Northerly flow here in New Mexico, southerly flow here out ahead of the surface low. So just broad cyclonic flow, surface low somewhere in this vicinity here. And picking out our surface features, our warm front in particular, particular a little bit on the tricky side. One thing we do see right away is a, this outflow boundary that we talked about just a little bit ago. Clear, clear outflow boundary setting up right in this region. You can see the little, those R-shaped symbols there. That is indicative of thunderstorms ongoing. So right now, our outflow boundary, if I had to draw it in, you can see temperatures in the low 60s up here with easterly surface winds. Down here to the south, uh, temperatures and dew points much higher into the 70s for both with more southeasterly and southerly surface flow. So our outflow boundary looks to be somewhere in this vicinity here, just kind of roughly eyeballing it right in here, uh, right along that wind shift. So that is where our outflow boundary is sitting now. And again, you can see a lot of that convection, those R-shaped uh, symbols, those are thunderstorm symbols here for our current weather map symbols. A lot of that convection is north of this boundary, and so it should stay fairly elevated through the morning. But again, here on the southwest flank, where storms are closer to that boundary and may be able to latch onto that boundary, that's where we could see that severe threat develop through the morning. And then anything in the open warm sector south of this boundary uh, will have that all hazards threat going into the afternoon. Again, yesterday we weren't sure how this morning convection would play out and where this boundary would set up, but it looks like it's set up right in here. And given that we're going to see continued convection north of it through much of the morning, I don't expect this to move all that far to the north. And so it's probably going to stay somewhere in this vicinity through the much of the day, may even start to shift south a little bit more if we have continued convection north of it, which is likely. So this may even sag a little bit farther south. Just for some context, here is Houston right there, um, and Lufkin is right in here. So again, the SBC has drawn that greatest tornado risk right along the portions of the boundary there. And that is, again, I don't think it's going to move all that much, at least to the north, certainly not going to traverse to the north much this afternoon with all that convection north of it. it, may even sag south a little bit, but it's going to stay somewhat in this general corridor. And therefore, the greatest severe threat is going to be along and south of that going into this morning and then into the afternoon and evening hours tonight. So pretty complex, severe setup. Low is out in here again. The synoptic warm front not really going to be in play with this setup. A little bit tough to tell. I do think it's draped somewhere here across Oklahoma into North Texas. Uh, not much of a wind shift we can see, uh, but we do have a pretty stark drop off in moisture here to the north. 40s dew points, 30s and 40s dew points, northern Oklahoma. 50s dew points here in southern Oklahoma. So it's probably somewhere in this corridor right in here, if I had to guess our synoptic scale warm front. Uh, again, not going to be in play here really for this event. It's going to be along and south of that outflow boundary is where our greatest uh, activity is going to be for this afternoon and evening. So complex setup. Let's take a look at some soundings from across the region. Here is the Fort Worth sounding from 12Z, so 7 a.m. Central Daylight Time this morning. And this was definitely north of that boundary. So you can see the kind of warm nose there in the low levels, some stable air in the low levels of the atmosphere. But elevated instability for sure, helping to continue those storms both in northwest Texas and those storms north of the boundary closer to the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Plenty of elevated instability in this environment to persist, to allow those storms to persist in an elevated capacity for the most part. Uh, but we do have strong deep layer shear for supercells, effective bulk shear at 77 knots. So organized severe storms are uh, definitely uh, on the table with this early activity, even though we have uh, more of an elevated instability profile here this morning. So plenty of uh, ingredients for organized severe storms this morning. And again, that should change south of the boundary a little bit. Let's go down to Corpus Christi where we are in the warm sector. This is very interesting to note here, fairly shallow moisture in the low levels. And again, this is on the western fringes of our warm sector, but still well within it. So that is interesting to see that we have fairly shallow moisture here beneath a very stout, what appears to be an elevated mixed layer here aloft, very steep lapse rates, very dry air above that little low level um, moist layer. So we do have somewhat of an elevated mixed layer here that will continue to traverse east across the region and that will help build instability throughout the day and could have some implications on tomorrow's setup. We'll get on into that in just a second. Uh, but So a very good looking thermo thermodynamic profile here this morning across this region that is going to maintain itself through much of the day. Um, especially, and then we'll, we should get a certain, a little bit of a surface-based profile going toward early evening. This may tend to stick around a little bit. We, again, our trough is still back in here. I'll put the 500 millibar map 
back up. Our trough is still well back to the west, so the forcing associated with that trough is still well back to the west. That trough is going to continue to move off to the east and, and finally make its way into impinge onto east Texas here by probably early evening. So it, we may not have enough forcing through the day to really bust this stable layer here at the surface. This is a pretty stout stable layer here in the low levels, uh, almost negative 400 convective inhibition there. So that is going to be tough to break. We will have continued low level warm moist advection here and perhaps some breaks in the clouds going into the afternoon to help with the busting of this capping inversion. But uh, we, may we may have a little bit of this capping inversion hang on through much of the afternoon. And that may preclude a greater threat in the open warm sector. But we do have very strong kinematics at play that could help overcome that. Again, strong deep layer shear for supercells, 60 plus knots of effective bulk shear, and pretty intense low level wind fields here at this point. Zero to one kilometer storm relative helicity in excess of 600 meters squared per second squared. Very large looping hodographs, strongly veering and strengthening winds with height, low level flow there uh, at about 40 to 50 knots. So very impressive low level uh, curvature in the hodographs, low level shear to support that tornado threat. But again, we may have a little bit of this low level inversion to deal with through much of the day before the forcing comes in and, and really starts to cool that lift and cool that inversion going into the early evening hours today. And by then, we're just not quite sure yet as if storm the storm mode will degrade enough uh, to kind of preclude a greater severe threat or not. Just going to have to be something we watch throughout the day. But this, this capping inversion looks a little bit stubborn and we may have that hang around, and that may be a saving grace here for folks in the enhanced risk area. But going into the evening hours, certainly if we have storms ongoing, we should be able to bust that cap with more forcing, and this kind of profile will be hanging around uh, through that, that time frame, and that will foster that all-hazards significant severe threat. All right, here is some model data. 12Z NAM coming in hot off the press as we are recording this. Um, so this will start off at 500 millibars here. So this is our trough initialized this morning here. Nice little closed low at 500 millibars. Nice belt of stronger flow rounding the base of that trough. Here is the progression, progression through the day. So you see that trough slowly starts to make its way east. And then the overall forcing starts to overspread the area. This, so this is at 0 Z, 7 p.m. tonight. Here is your trough still kind of back in here with our exit region kind of located back in here. Just a strong belt of southwesterly flow out ahead of it. And again, that's why I think we may see that cap be a little bit more stubborn until this trough makes its way fully in here to East Texas, which is going to be in the after dark period, uh, which is when we probably will see convective intensity and coverage especially coverage, really start to blossom, and we'll probably get an MCS into the overnight hours tomorrow. And that will be really our main threat for tomorrow's setup going into the southeast, is this QLCS that is expected to develop, given lots of forcing, lots of warm invection here uh, as the trough makes its way off to the east. So a very interesting uh, pattern here. Let's go down to the surface. We'll take a look at our surface pattern, and I'll just zoom in here right away to our southern plains sector. So again, broad surface low to start the day across Mexico into southwest Texas. Doesn't really tighten up a whole lot as we go into the afternoon and evening hours here. Much of the same, kind of stays in the same place there. Broad south, southerly or southeasterly flow out ahead of that in a broad region um, there across Texas into Louisiana. And then finally, as we go into the evening hours, that low starts to shift off to the east overnight here into Wednesday morning. Tightening of the surface low just a little bit. Uh, perhaps convective, some convective uh, elements here. Uh, with that surface low, but overall it is expected to tighten a bit going into tomorrow and eventually Thursday. Uh, so let's look at our moisture here. We're going to have a broad region of 60s and 70s dew points this morning as we saw uh, on our surface map here. Plenty of 60s and 70s dew points here across the region. 60s dew points stretching all the way back toward the Sanderson area back in here. So very extensive warm sector with this activity. And that's always an eyebrow raiser. When you have a very broad region with the ingredients for severe storms, that really tends to lead to a long duration severe threat. That's exactly what we have today. Very rich low level moisture here. Dew points in the 60s and 70s across this region. Again, we saw it was fairly shallow, especially in, uh, across southern portions of the region. There are Corpus Christi southward, but still low level moisture, very, very supportive of severe storms. 60s and 70s dew points over a wide swath from West Texas into Louisiana this morning. That will continue into the afternoon, kind of tighten up just a little bit as we go into the uh, early evening hours tonight. This is at 21Z, and you can see that outflow boundary. This is our outflow boundary here, synoptic warm front right in here. Uh, you can see it clearly on this dew point map. 
uh, but our outflow boundary is right in here. And you'll notice as we go into the rest of the day, doesn't move a whole lot at all, even sags a little bit farther south here across western portions of that boundary uh, as we have continued convection along and north of that boundary going into the afternoon. But anywhere south of this outflow boundary is where we are going to see that severe threat develop. So uh, southern and southeast Texas into western Louisiana going to be that favored corridor. Now our low-level jet again, as we talked about, going to be situated across eastern portions of this warm sector. So at the, in, here in the morning, plenty of low-level flow to go around, and that will continue through the afternoon and evening uh, in this low-level jet plume. Interestingly, the NAM does uh, seem to want to decrease the low-level jet throughout the day, which is very, very interesting. Wouldn't really expect that. It does pick up after dark once again with this nocturnal ramp up in the low-level jet. But for much of the day, we will have this nice low-level jet plume across east Texas, western Louisiana to support robust um, low-level shear across this area. So but you can see to the west, we have, if any storms form back here along the dry line, uh, they will be in a very limited low-level shear environment away from the best uh, low-level jet plume. And we'll take some soundings here just to show you that along and south of the boundary. So here's along the dry line, very limited low-level shear, but very strong instability. But back here to the east, still strong instability, a little bit of that warm nose still remaining into the afternoon. This is at 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time, but our kinematics looking very, very good. Long hodographs, favorable for supercells, strong low-level shear, uh, strongly curved low-level hodographs, given that strengthening low-level flow uh, and veering low-level flow with height would support that strong tornado threat. But again, can, uh, thermodynamics in the low levels look a little bit iffy given that strong capping inversion in place. So we'll have to watch that for sure, especially with just this warm invection really fueling these storms a little bit ahead of the main forcing with the trough, which is back in here. Uh, so we'll have to watch that for sure. That could preclude a greater threat for more robust updrafts that would have that all hazards significant threat. Going into 0Z, 7 p.m., we'll have continued convection here along and north of the, of the boundary. Anything that can latch onto the boundary will uh, maintain that uh, all hazards threat going into the evening. Take a sounding here right at the Lufkin area, right about 0Z. Still maintaining a very favorable environment for all severe hazards, especially tornadoes there. Plenty of instability, 2,400 joules per kilogram mixed layer cape. Uh, and by this point, we do see that, that inversion um, lessening a little bit. Uh, and our kinematics are favorable for that tornado and damaging wind threat. So um, going into the afternoon and evening, plenty of in, uh, ingredients here for severe weather. Um, all, that all hazards threat. And then we go into the overnight hours tonight. That forcing really starts to make its way in. That will really push the western extent of the warm sector eastward. And then we go into tomorrow's threat. Tomorrow's threat going to be quite interesting. Uh, and again, the SBC has, has had enough evidence. They've seen enough evidence to warrant a moderate risk with this setup tomorrow. So as we go into tomorrow, the uh, overall geometry of the trough is going to change somewhat to, so that we have a little bit better of a low level response, a little bit more of a neutral to slightly even negatively tilted uh, orientation of this trough, which will foster a greater low level response and therefore we will see very strong low level shear overspreading the warm sector tomorrow. The main convective activity with tomorrow's threat is going to come from today's activity. That is going to, again, form into probably a, a very extensive QLCS or MCS going into the evening and overnight hours tonight into tomorrow morning, and that will carry on given the continuation of strong low-level flow, the, that ramp up of the, of the low-level jet after dark, and this overall uh, strong response here from the, really throughout the entire atmosphere, will maintain that severe threat going into the morning with that QLCS. The question is, the, the big question with tomorrow is, is the overall degree of discrete warm sector activity out ahead of the QLCS. So let's go down to the surface here. We saw our trough going to take on a, a very nice orientation going into tomorrow. So let's take a look here at our surface data. So here we go into the evening and overnight hours tonight. That surface level starts to tighten a little bit as the overall trough takes on a, a bit better orientation. Again, we'll have a squall line ongoing here back to the west throughout the morning and early afternoon hours tomorrow. And again, the question is going to be out ahead of that. Will we have uh, ample uh, ability for storms to form in the open warm sector? As those discrete storms will have the greatest threat of tapping into this greater uh, low-level shear profile for strong tornadoes. And of course, we will have uh, the threat for strong tornadoes along the line. But of course, we, as we know, with a more linear configuration of the storms, the overall strong long track tornado threat goes down and the damaging wind threat goes up. Uh, with, but with discrete storms, you can have that real strong long track tornado threat. 
So going into tomorrow, uh, we'll put that surface flow begins to tighten. Uh, with our moisture, we're gonna have we're gonna maintain quite a bit of that warm sector going into the day tomorrow. Um, but the the question is how how extensive is that warm sector? So this is the NAM going into tomorrow, and you can see that we start to see a little bit of a decrease in the size of the overall warm sector which you know may not bode as well for open warm sector discrete storms you like to have a, a very broad warm sector here from with e, from east to west extent to foster a lot of real estate for there to be discrete uh, storms so assuming that we'll have an ongoing convection tomorrow we'll probably have a pretty big uh qlcs line of storms here along the cold front and uh dry line here composite kind of boundary there off to the west doesn't leave a whole lot of room for storms here. Maybe across southeast Louisiana, southern Mississippi, we, we might have enough room for discrete storms out ahead of the line. But there's just, at least on the NAM here, there's not a ton of warm sector to work with to allow for storms to happen. See if we see any con, uh, convergence boundaries in the open warm sector. See our flow here across southern Mississippi out of the south-southeast. A little bit more southerly flow here across southeast Louisiana. So maybe some slight convergence here. We'll have plenty of strong warm injection ongoing as the surface flow tightens up. And we get the fa more favorable low-level response. So plenty of warm injection uh, ongoing out here ahead of the line. And perhaps some very slight convergence here. Could see a few convergence bands set up. Some very subtle convergence bands. As we know, the forcing along those subtle convergence bands is much more uh, much weaker, which allows for a tends to allow for a more discrete storm mode out ahead uh, in the open warm sector. So I have to watch that for sure. Um, we'll take let's take some soundings tomorrow. This is going to be at uh, we'll take one at 18z ahead of the main line. Going to have plenty of convection to deal with out ahead of the main line. We'll just take one here. Uh, right in southern Mississippi, uh, just to kind of get a, a, an interrogation of the entire region there, southern Louisiana as well. And this is what we're going to be dealing with for both the line and the, any warm sector development out ahead of it. And you can see here why they've issued the moderate risk. We do have adequate instability. It is your typical southeast kind of profile with limited low-level uh, thermodynamics, but still very deep moisture here to support that. And in, in the southeast, uh, weak low-level lapse rates don't really matter all that much. but So plenty of instability to support a severe threat, 1,500 joules per kilogram mixed layer cape, uh, very uh, moist low levels. But look at our low-level shear. Low-level shear is intense, over 600 meters squared per second squared effective storm relative helicity tomorrow. Large, large looping hodographs giving a very strong low-level jet response, strongly veering and strengthening winds with height. Those one-kilometer winds looking right at about 55 to 60 knots there. So a very strong low-level jet overspreading this region to foster that strong tornado threat both within the QLCS and especially with any uh, open warm sector discrete supercell development out ahead of it. Uh, so again, that's just going to be a question we're going to have to wait and see the answer to uh, going into tomorrow, whether or not we'll see discrete supercells out ahead of the main line. If we do, they will be able to tap into this uh, very strong low-level shear to promote a strong tornado risk. Very Given very strong flow aloft as well, that will be have a tendency to be transported downward through downdrafts in the convective line, and that's why they have that 45% hatched area outlined for significant damaging winds. We could see some very strong wind gusts in the squall line tomorrow, 70, 80, 90 miles an hour possibly with some gusts in that line given convective downward momentum transport uh, through downdrafts. Down here in south, southern Louisiana, very strong looking profiles as well. Strong instability, strong low level shear uh, to support that uh, significant tornado and damaging wind threat there. Back to the west, we may see a secondary round of storms develop tomorrow closer to the Arklotex region. We have some moisture remaining here back to the northwest. Uh, not going to be any sort of significant severe threat back here, but we could see a few stronger updrafts closer to the colder air aloft associated with the upper trough. We'll put on the temperatures here. So some colder air starting to overspread the region here. These grays and lighter pinks are your colder air aloft approaching minus 20 degrees Celsius. So that will start to overspread the region going into the afternoon tomorrow, helping to destabilize the atmosphere. Our main uh, shear is going to be well, well off to the east. So very limited low level shear for any type of tornado threat. But we could see a marginal uh, hail and uh, wind threat develop with any updrafts that do form closer to that Arklotex region in that tongue of moisture, that remnant tongue of moisture closer to the uh, core of the upper trough. So not much out there. Our main severe threat, of course, is going to be out here. That will continue into the overnight hours Wednesday into Thursday. And again, we're just going to have to wait and see how the Wednesday event plays out to see how Thursday is going to play out down here. 
The warm sector, at least on the NAM, starts to get pretty pinched off going into the morning on Thursday. Not a very wide eastward, westward, east-west extent of that warm sector there to support any robust severe threat going into Thursday morning. We perhaps will, we might see a little bit better uh, destabilization out here into the Carolinas going into the morning, uh, the afternoon hours on Thursday. But again, we're just gonna have to wait and see how that threat plays out going into Thursday. Secondary threat up here in the Midwest for Thursday as well. That second, that kind of bimodal risk. This will be much closer to our surface low. And therefore we could see a little bit of a severe threat develop up there, up into the Ohio, Kentucky region. Surface level a little bit more strung out than it was in days past. This is an 18Z, so 1 p.m. Central Time, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday. Much more of a strung out surface low. If we were to look at even yesterday's uh, model runs, uh, which we looked at in our video, it seemed to me that, like there was a very much a much more tightly wound surface low. Yeah, there you go. This was yesterday's run at 18Z. Much tighter surface low here. Uh, much more, uh, much better warm sector up here into the surface low. Now we're talking about a little bit more of a strung out surface low. A little bit less favorable low level profile uh, and pattern for a robust severe threat up here. But still, plenty of, of moisture and uh, to foster that severe threat. This is at 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Eastern Ohio here out ahead of in this little moisture plume ahead of this surface low. Uh, we'll see what the environment entails here. I uh, do have a little bit of convective feedback here, a little bit of instability, uh, but somewhat limited low level shear, fairly unidirectional profile, wind profiles you go up in the atmosphere, uh, but plenty of deep layer shear for supercells, uh, but probably mostly a large hail and damaging wind threat up in that area of the Ohio, Kentucky region for Thursday. All right, let's look at some convection allowing models for today's event and perhaps tomorrow. Again, in these complex convective scenarios, the cams don't do a really good job at, at uh, really nailing these setups, but at least it can give us a, a broad idea of what might happen uh, going into the afternoon and evening today into uh, tomorrow. So this is the 12Z HRRR. All that convection that we saw on the radar is being depicted pretty well by the HER this morning. And you can see additional development going on here. Most of this, again, will be along and north of the outflow boundary. We, we put our outflow boundary somewhere in this vicinity right here. We do see some activity on the southwest flank along and south of that boundary, which will be in, the, in that richer moisture in the open warm sector. Initially, we'll foster that large hail threat as the low-level jet is off to the east here. But as it moves into that low-level jet plume going into the afternoon, and as long as it stays in the open warm sectors along and south of the boundary, it will foster that all hazards threat, including the threat for tornadoes. Again, most of this will remain elevated with it more of a hail threat north of the front, but anything that can maintain itself to the south of that front will have that greatest severe threat. So here we go into the evening hours. So this is really the early afternoon hours. This is at 2 p.m. Central Time. Some supercells back in here from this additional, from this uh, initial activity. This would have mostly just a large hail threat back in here, more elevated up here as the northern, the more north you get. So more just a large hail threat if this setup, uh, this this kind of setup comes to fruition. Some additional supercells along the boundary here going into the afternoon. These do get kind of close here. The herd does have quite a few supercells uh, very close to the boundary going into the evening hours today. This is at 2Z, so 9 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Uh, and then you'll see as we go into the evening and overnight hours, plenty of convection fires here into in South Texas moves off to the east and we'll have just a mess going into tomorrow morning, which will be our main threat for severe storms with tomorrow's activity and tomorrow's moderate risk. But here is the thing we have to watch for. The HER is definitely depicting a couple of bands of open warm sector discrete supercells in that warm advection regime to the south and southeast of the ongoing convective line. So those again, this is only at 15Z, this is at 10, PM, 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. So we'll definitely be getting an early start here tomorrow as the uh, ingredients for severe storms will be well in place even by tomorrow morning. Uh, so we'll have to watch that for sure as we could have those multiple bands of, of open warm sector discrete supercells. And you can see there, this one very in particular uh, is a the would be your candidate for that long track tornado threat, strong tornado threat before it gets munched by the line. Then eventually we'll see a much messier storm mode come to fruition and just an overall mess here going into the afternoon. But that perhaps that morning time frame, morning through early afternoon will be your best bet for a few uh, stronger uh, discrete supercells out ahead of the line before it becomes a really pretty big mess going into Mississippi and Alabama going into the evening hours um, of uh, Wednesday. 
So that squall line will continue to track eastward going into the southeast states on into Thursday. I'll change the sectors here again. Take this with a grain of salt. Uh, these cams don't do a very good job this far out, but just to give you an, an idea of what things might happen with the squall line as it moves off to the east. Messy storm mode here, perhaps some, uh, likely some embedded tornadoes within this line, some strong damaging wind, damaging wind gusts. Line will continue into the east, perhaps some broken supercells more farther, farther to the south and southwest here with this line. So we'll have to watch that into Wednesday evening. Uh, but then the instability corridor kind of decreases going into Thursday, uh, but we'll still have that maintenance of the severe threat going into uh, Alabama, Georgia, Carolinas, Florida into Thursday morning and afternoon. So let's take a look at another model here. This is the Wurf ARW model. So here we go into, whoops, let me uh, go back to our Southern Plains sector here to look at today's threat. So it's initialized the ongoing activity pretty well. Additional activity develops through the morning. Uh, the little bit, and you see here on the Southwest flank, that's what we're most concerned about of this ongoing convection. Uh, if it's close to that boundary, would have that uh, all hazard threat. Continues into the evening. Lots of outflow production with these storms, uh, which is interesting given some fairly moist low levels. Could be a product of the drier air aloft. Uh, we'll have to watch that for sure. Some additional activity out here to the north. Again, this will foster mostly just a large hail threat uh, off in North Texas as the uh, early day activity, that batch of storms out here to the west, continues into the evening. Uh, will foster just a large hail threat there. Continues uh, activity into the overnight hours, and then we just see a lot of convection develop tomorrow morning. Uh, and that will be a our main risk for tomorrow within this QLCS. And then again, discrete supercells ahead of the squall line. This model, not quite far enough out yet to go into the afternoon, but you see a lot of little beads, beans out here in the open warm sector. Those would be your potential discrete supercells in that environment. NSSL WERF model. Here we go into the afternoon, kind of a messy mode there in East Texas along the, and north of the outflow boundary. Not much here, interestingly, to the south of the boundary. You can, and you can see why I was uh, concerned with the northern advance, any northward advance of the outflow boundary and the potential continue, continued southward sagging of the boundary. This is at 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time today. You can see this fine line here out ahead of all this convection. That is outflow, and that will continue to reinforce that outflow boundary uh, to perhaps allowing it to sag to the south. We, If you want to see a, an outflow boundary tornado event, you really want to see that boundary uh, remain stationary. And if we see a lot of outflow producing convection, convection north of the front, or north of the boundary, then that would allow it to continue to sag southward. So something to watch as we go through the day today. Another thing, though, we have we have seen, especially with the ARW and NSSL WERF models, is that we don't see a whole lot of activity to the south of this ongoing convection in the open warm sector. And I think that has to do with that pretty stout capping inversion we saw in the morning soundings from across this region. Perhaps a little bit stubborn to erode throughout the day given a lack of overall synoptic forcing in this area. So that is something to watch. May see a little bit of uh, more isolated development out here in the open warm sector, if any at all. Uh, the stronger convergence along the outflow boundary might help that. But uh, with a little bit more uh, meridional flow here out ahead of it, southwest flow, storms that form along the boundary, if that is our favored corridor for storm initiation, would possibly tend to move north of that boundary pretty quickly. Uh, so that is one thing to keep in mind. But a lot of these cams not showing a ton in the open warm sector south of the boundary, which is interesting. So we'll have to watch that for sure. But the overall idea is that a lot of convection will continue into the overnight hours and then into the morning hours. Tomorrow we'll have just a mess of convection there. Uh, the NSSL WERF model showing pretty messy convection going into Louisiana and Mississippi. A couple of those stronger storms back out here, back in the Arklatex region in the uh, closer to the cold air aloft. Again, marginal severe threat there at best, uh, but we could see a few stronger updrafts there, produce some marginally severe hail and damaging wind. So very interesting setup uh, there today um, and into tomorrow. Uh, just an overall complex setup. This is not an easy setup to forecast at all, um, but this is what we have for now from the folks at the SPC. Level three out of five, uh, enhanced risk for today across parts of central and east Texas into western Louisiana. Again, uh, most of that activity going to be focused along that outflow boundary. And I think a lot of it will stay north of the outflow boundary, which looks to be somewhere in this vicinity here. And then that might change throughout the day, especially if we get outflow producing convection to push that boundary southward a little bit, but shouldn't really uh, lift any farther north than it is now. So along and south of that boundary going to be your greatest severe threat. And that's why they have that 10% hash tornado threat uh, uh, right along that outflow boundary there in East Texas and Western Louisiana. I'll put on the tornado threat right now so you can see it. Again, 10% yeah, hash tornado threat there in the yellow stippled area. Places like Lufkin over to Alexandria, south of Shreveport, northeast of Houston. 
under the gun for that greatest tornado threat today. Could see a few tornadoes back with any activity that is in the warm sector back here to the west, uh, but mostly any the activity down, out here uh, from west Texas eastward into north Texas, mostly going to be a large hail threat given that it will remain elevated. Large hail, definitely a threat today with any more discrete supercells. Uh, especially north of that boundary as they tend to be a little bit more elevated. Elevated storms tend to produce a lot of hail. So we could see some large to very large hail with the setup today and damaging winds, especially going into the overnight hours, I think, as we get additional convection uh, to develop uh, and uh, increase in coverage uh, going into the overnight hours. Then we go into tomorrow. Moderate risk once again out here across southern Louisiana, central and southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southwest Alabama, large enhanced risk areas surrounding that. The threat, greatest threats for tomorrow going to be a strong, damaging uh, outflow wind gusts, in, especially within the squall line, and significant tornadoes, uh, especially within that moderate risk area. Uh, it's all going to depend on storm mode if we can get open warm sector discrete supercells. If we can get discrete supercells out ahead of the line, then that would be your greatest chance of getting some strong long track tornadoes in there. But with such strong low level shear in play, we could have some stronger spin-up tornadoes within the line uh, itself back out to the west as it moves off into the these areas here. So tornado threats certainly uh, heightened tomorrow, but the damaging wind threat is also extremely heightened given strong that strong low-level flow transported down to the surface through downdrafts. 45% hashed area for damaging wind there in the moderate risk. So we could see some very damaging wind gusts there, straight line wind gusts along with that tornado threat. Large hail, not going to be much of a threat. Perhaps a few stronger cores up here in that secondary region in the Arklatex area area tomorrow, uh, closer to that cold air aloft, uh, but a large hail with such strong low level shear, not going to be much of an issue uh, with tomorrow's setup. Then we go into Thursday, once again, that bimodal threat for severe storms. Uh, we'll have to see how Wednesday plays out to see how Thursday plays out, but uh, that corridor from northern Florida into the Carolinas, and then that separate area up into Ohio and Kentucky. It's backed off a little bit in the intensity of the surface low, so the overall uh, setup up there, not looking all that favorable for really robust severe weather, but still plenty of ingredients for severe weather up there. And then the continuation of the severe threat from Wednesday into Thursday in that southern region. So if you live in any of these areas here, the, these colored regions here over the next couple of days, next several days, definitely keep an eye on things. Keep those weather radios handy. Stay tuned to your favorite source of uh, what local weather information, the National Weather Service, your local news agencies there to get the most up-to-date information as we could be in for some widespread significant severe weather today into tomorrow especially and then continuing into Thursday. So with that, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.